Well, god damn, that was a pretty amazing episode of Zetsubo N. I mean, first thing first, Twilight Syndrome arc done immediately. One episode, we're straight through it, and we're into the point where Hajime has just agreed to become Izuru Kamakura to go through the Hulk cultivation project. That is blowing my mind right now. I mean, I guess I thought they were going to do this like a proper arc and really go in depth into what happened during this, but instead they just realized anybody who's watching this has probably played the game so they don't have to show the murders that happened all they really have to do is show how it affected hajime i mean they did go one step further than that we got to really know who natsumi is and man natsumi was cool she had some serious depth to her everything that we knew about natsumi from the game was all from fuyuhiko and the way fuyuhiko painted her she was the ultimate emoto that is what's so adorable. I mean, we had him telling us in the game, she's the ultimate Emoto. She's so much better at being a gangster than me. She's so much better than me in general. My parents love her more. She's such a great person. He says all of this and he 100% believes all of this. And yet in this episode, we found out she's nothing. <laughs> she's not the ultimate Emoto. She's just a normal person. She's just a normal girl who is raised in the Kuzuryu clan, so she probably is a bit of a gangster, but still. She was never considered for Hope's Peak Academy. She was never considered to have ultimate talent. And it seems like her parents didn't actually want her to lead. They still wanted Fuyuhiko to lead, so my god. She had such a complex about that. This is the thing. She wanted to be the ultimate Emoto, and she clearly kind of is. I mean, she's so in love with her brother. She just wanted to be by his side. She literally said... People without talent don't deserve to be by his side. I need to be able to have that talent to get to that point and be able to say to him, I have this talent. So, I mean, that was so sweet. And it changed the way that Hajime was looking at things so much. Throughout this episode, Hajime's emotions went through a roller coaster. He had continuously been cheered up by Nanami and made to feel like he mattered. He was becoming friends with her. They were getting close and that was all adorable. But, I mean, when despair started to drop all around him he started to feel that and people around him just handled things really really badly fucking sakakura man i kind of hate the dick <laughs> i mean it's clear he has his reasons for what he did but he beat the shit out of hajime spat on him while he was down on the ground and was quite willing to just keep beating him if yukazome hadn't dropped in and i kind of understand the things that he was saying to hajime because he clearly hated the reserve department because he seems to think that normal people being around ultimates leads the normal people into despair. He said these things about how people that are normal shouldn't be around the ultimates because they always start to envy them. They follow them around like the shit coming out of goldfish. That was a horrible line, man. And he said normal people should just live their lives as cogs endlessly doing work like a cog in the machine that that was just horrible man i mean to be fair he said the reason that he said all of that was just to get hajime to stop investigating he wanted to break his spirit but he did a bit more than that he broke him a bit too much he sent him into a bit of a despair spiral to be quite honest and this is the thing i'm wondering if sakakura actually knew exactly what went down in the reserve department because he seems to be the head of security at this point, And he really, really believed that shit that he was saying at that point. That all felt real. It was a bit too serious. He didn't know what kind of person Hajime Hinata was. He just knew of what went on with the last two murders. We had Natsumi who was trying to follow her brother. So forced her way into this school. And then Sato who was completely psychotic. And loved Mihiru to the point where she would kill for her. So, I mean, I'm thinking Sakakura was just a bit pissed off at the reserve department in general at that point, And especially at the idea of that reflecting badly on Hope's Peak Academy. Who were then trying to sweep everything under the rug rather than care about it. So, I mean, he was starting to get disillusioned with Hope's Peak. He doesn't like the reserve department. He just doesn't want them to be there. So he naturally disliked Hajime, who could have been as psychotic as Sato for all he knew. <laughs> Keep in mind, that doesn't mean that I agree with what he did. He was a dick. He beat the shit out of Hajime, knocked him while he was down, he spat on him. That was just way overkill. The one good thing that came out of that 
was Hajime looking up at him and saying, Sorry, what she goes up? I loved that. That was such a great moment. Oh, man. But yeah. Hate him, but I can kind of see where he was coming from with that. So, I mean, that leads us into Sato. Sato is more of a psycho than I expected. I mean, a lot of the dialogue in this episode was based around what her general mind state was. It's clear to us, I mean, especially those of us while we were playing Danganronpa 2, it was a natural assumption that Fuhiko's sister was still bullying Mihiru as the events of the Despair Syndrome were going on. And while Natsumi did say some offhanded things, I mean, she made a joke about how she could make Mihiru quit out of Hope's Peak Academy and then she might be able to take her place, which was just horrible and <laughs> underneeded. But I mean, yeah, from that point on, Sato went psycho on Natsumi. Sato was just continuously following her around, telling her to leave Mahiro alone. And this is the thing. I'm wondering if Natsumi ever did anything physically to Mahiro. I mean, we were led to believe that she did, but at the same time, with all these hints in the dialogue that have been going on, we had Juzo spouting his bullshit. We had even Natsumi herself who was talking about Sato being <laughs> goldfish shit as well, which was hilarious. The fact that they both used that term. But this is the thing. Natsumi never actually did anything physically. She once almost punched someone. She was almost punching Sato. But when Mahiru got in the way, she stopped. I think she would have happily punched Sato in the face because Sato deserved it. But she didn't want to punch Mihiru. She didn't actually want to hit Mihiru. And this is the thing. We had this moment when Sato had already gone through with it and killed Natsumi. Where Sato was trying to defend herself. Talking about how they'd been bullied so much. But what she really says is that Mihiru and Natsumi had had arguments. She never actually says they had a physical fight. And then Sato like lifts up her arm where she's got a long scar on the arm. And she talks about how it must have been that person. I think that was all bullshit. I think this is the thing. Natsumi wasn't a violent person. Sato just scared Mihiru to the point where Mihiru didn't want to be around Natsumi. Natsumi probably was abrasive because she was ridiculously jealous of Mihiru getting scouted as one of the ultimates, like her brother. But it seems like Sato tried to play up those expectations and actually cut herself... To make it seem like she really was defending Mihiru so she could get closer to her. I mean, she even says this line, which is really off-putting. It's something like Sakura says about Munakado all the time. He says that he's the Future Foundation's hope. They even said it in this episode, that he's the only one who could save Hope's Peak Academy. And at the same time, we have Sato saying the same thing to Mihiru. She said to Mihiru, you're the photography cub's hope. I'm sure your photos will be all over the world someday. So this is the thing. Sato seems like she's just completely psychotically obsessive over Mihiru. She wanted to look like she was more of a friend, so she faked an injury. And Natsumi may have not even been that bad. Natsumi may have been just, like, as mouthy as Hiyoko. In which case, maybe that's why Mihiru and Hiyoko became so close in Danganronpa 2. Maybe Mihiru was actually a little bit close to Natsumi before Sato busted in and made it seem like she was actually psychotic and really dangerous. Maybe she is just one of those mouthy type of girls. I mean, we even saw it in this episode. She broke down crying because she wanted to be with her brother so much and she felt so alone in the reserve course. I mean, she was trying to make friends. She did her own introduction. It was really cutting to everyone, so nobody wanted to talk to her. But then she literally sought out Hajime and tried to have a conversation with him. She wanted to make friends. Even though she saw Hajime as someone who had given up and was just a normal person, which she didn't like. She just wanted to have a friend, man. So she wasn't this bitchy person who was as psychotic as we expect. I'm sure she's just ridiculously in love with her own chan and probably mouthy as all hell. <laughs> but I mean, thanks to all this stuff going down, Sakakura's pissed and... You know, Fuyuhiko and Pekuyama are probably spiralling into despair right now. That's going to be what's in most interesting for me in the next couple of episodes. Seeing how those two interact both with each other, with the rest of the class. I mean, they had that moment in this episode where Peko Pekuyama really wanted to keep an eye on Natsumi and make sure she didn't get into any trouble. Fuyuhiko thought it would be fine and just wanted Peko to live a normal life. He just wants her to be a normal girl. 
So, I mean, Peko, I think she felt this despair just as hard as Fuyuhiko, if not harder, because she wanted to do something to protect Natsumi, and she didn't, even though she wanted to. So, yeah, that's a lot of regret right there. Man, that moment when she punched the wall and all the pink blood came dripping out. That was fucked up. Oh, man. And also, speaking of the whole cultivation project, that whole meeting of minds between Kirigiri Jin and Tengen and Kizakura, man, that backs up my theory so much. I mean, none of the three of them really liked the idea of the whole cultivation project. They didn't like the idea of creating artificial talent and artificial hope. So, I mean, they're going to feel real bad when everything goes wrong on this. And I mean, Jin doesn't survive it, but it makes me think that maybe I'm a little bit closer to my theory of being correct about everything being set up by Tengen and Kizakura and Chisa and Danganronpa 3 and Mirai Hen. Because, yeah, they can see everything that's going wrong. They're not doing anything about it. They'll probably want to make amends. And it seems like Tengen was being genuine in the last episode when he said to Hajime, you can live as a normal person. Don't feel, Don't fear being normal. So that's good. I like it. I liked him being a genuine person. I didn't like the idea that he could have been saying that just to subtly push him in the direction of becoming Izuru. So I mean, finally, with all that Twilight Syndrome stuff out of the way, with all the secretive stuff out of the way, our Hinanami scenes, man. They were so cute. I mean, right at the beginning, we had Chiaki being so sweet, playing games with him, making sure to spend a lot of time with him. Talking about how she wants to make memories and build up that hope. I mean, it's the whole thing of the ending. When we see the ending video and she's got the hope fragments in her hands. That seems to be Chisa's kind of understanding of things. You build memories, you build hope, you get that hope in your heart. And it guides you through life. And that's what Chiaki has really taken to heart in all of this. She's really trying to build those memories, trying to make friends, trying to enjoy herself. And it really hit me hard, man. <laughs> I mean, she used her catchphrase in this time doing that, I think. But she literally said to him, I enjoy spending time with you, I think. Straight to Hajime's face. That was so adorable. That was so sweet. I loved it. And then right at the end, we got that possible final meeting between Hajime Hinata and Chiaki Nanami. Because obviously Hajime Hinata may now become Izuru Kamakura before he ever sees Nanami again. And they had that moment. It was so sweet. He's literally said to her, you're not just the ultimate gamer. You've got so many good qualities. She blushed so much. It was so sweet. And we got that vision into Hajime's mind where he was like, I wanted to be able to say to you, I have a talent and be able to stand on your level. But I can't. And that's the thing. This is partly Sakakura's fault. If he'd been allowed in to the actual Hope's Peak Academy been able to investigate Mahiru and then been able to talk with Chiaki about this stuff it would have been a lot easier on Hajime but instead Sakakura beat the crap out of him and basically reinforced the notion in his mind that normal people can never be that close to ultimates oh man so yeah Hajime just broke he realized he can become Izuru Kamakura he has that emptiness he has the ability that they can fix him up to be the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate hope even. And he's quite happy with that idea. With all the despair falling around him. And the fact that he realised he'll never be with Chiaki Nanami. He thinks he'll never be with Chiaki Nanami. Oh man. It was just so soul crushing. Everything was animated so well. I'm really sad. I am really sad. And it's only going to get worse from here. After Hajime becomes Izuru, shit's really going to hit the fan. We're going to have the tragedy coming in. We might have Ryoko or Junko or Mukuro coming in. Oh, man. It's got to be crazy. Everything is just going to get more despair-filled from here. So, yeah, I really want to believe in Chisa's words that there's going to maybe not be a sad ending to this. But, I mean, Jesus, it's going to get sad for a really long time. I think we need a little bit of happiness in the next episode while shit's going down. <laughs> Like, they definitely need to expand on what's going through Fuhiko and Peko's minds, but we definitely also need some more of that cuteness from the first two episodes just to keep us sane. So yeah, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about Natsumi and every other character, especially Sato, her psychoticness. Let me know what you think about Juzo Sakakura. Do you 
like what he did in saving Hajime so he didn't get killed for looking too deeply into this? Or do you think he definitely went too far? And do you agree with my idea that he was just pissed off at the reserve course and maybe that led to it? And especially, what do you think about the idea that maybe Sato played up that thing a bit too much, was never actually hurt by Natsumi, faked the whole thing? Let me know your thoughts about that idea in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this review, then wreck that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.